I'm not often at the junkyard, but here we've got one beautiful S60 next to another beautiful S60. Right behind them is a beautiful XC70. Oh man, there are eight S80s today. I mean, that's, that really tells you something about the reliability of those S80s if there are eight of them at one point. Here we've got our 1995 BMW 525i, conveniently parked next to a 98 S70. Well, that's not what we're here for. We're here for the coolant sensor. And there it is, attached to the side of the radiator. That's what triggers the fans. So we're gonna check the part number to make sure it's the right temperatures and take it home. On the side here is our part number. This is the 91 and 99 degrees Celsius switch. And we're looking for the one that's a little bit lower, the 80 to 88, but I'm gonna hang on to this in case I find it. In here, the top one is their neutral ground. Then you've got T1 and T2. Those correspond with the low and high side grounds for the fan circuit. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really crazy about that whooshing sound that the mechanical fan makes. So today, I went and I picked up an electric fan from a 960. It's complete with the wiring and the relay, so I just need to kind of wire that up to the battery, make all the connections ready, and it should be a pretty good fan. Uh, the shroud, however, you'll notice, is a bit wider than our current radiator, so we're going to want to cut it, make it a little smaller, and fit it in. So first things first, I took some measurements, and we're going to cut. All right, we've trimmed our fan shroud um, to the very end of the vents, those extra little flaps there. And so we're gonna see how it fits now. It's gonna be a little bit small because I still have to do the other side. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is cut the excess of the other side so that we can get that end piece, which is this guy right here. And I want this piece to tuck in in there on the radiator. Let's see if I can get a good angle for you guys to demonstrate that. So what I mean by that piece fitting in there is it sort of tucks in to the edge of the radiator. Like that. Cutting the feet off the bottom of this shroud made it fit a lot better in the sense that it now goes all the way to the bottom of the radiator support and cups the top of the radiator there. So we're going to figure out how to attach that more permanently in a few minutes. First, let's attach the other side. The nice thing about this other portion is that it goes to the other side of the vents. So that's where we're going to do our cutting. So we're basically subtracting the width of those little flaps that go um, on the extra part of the radiator shroud. And here's the back side. So we'll just be cutting along this edge here. Okay, there we have our shroud and two halves. I repurposed these little rubber flaps uh, to just basically act as a cover between the two halves and I've got a metal strap here, here, and here. That's a metal bracket and there's a metal bracket. Everybody loves repurposing, right? I hope so, because I sure do. Well, I can proudly say that after about two hours of trimming this piece and getting that other side to match up, I have finally finished fitting it. A couple more things that you should notice. Down there in the corner where the rubber mount is for the radiator, you're going to want to trim that corner piece like such. That's just to fit it around that guy. Okay, great. The only thing left for me to do now is to drill some holes to attach the bottom here to that. And I'm thinking I could use these existing holes. The shroud is officially screwed in. We've got the fan ready to go. And another thing we need to do, which I need to order tonight probably, is to get a adapter here so that we can have it go off of the temperature sensor if we're not going to use the temperature sensor in there. Got to do a little bit of research on this, so I'll let you know what I find out. You're going to need to put screws all around in every hole until it's completely flush. At least that's what I'm doing, because I'm kind of a picky person about these things. 
So right now, this is how everything's going to look when it's done. I've got the relay already set up over there. Ideally, it would be great to use this port on the radiator, which is where a lot of other, I think the, some of the turbo cars have a sensor there for a temperature sensor. So I'd like to see if I could get that to work with the double switch. Um, the switch has a low and a high side, and the wiring is really easy. Let me show you. The fan will plug into the left side here. This one's got two wires labeled one and two, and the output one and two, so this would be the low and the high on the fan. And this big red one here is going to go right to your battery cable. So what I'm going to do is hook this up to the battery with a fusible link in case it pops a fuse. Um, some people put in about 30 amps. Uh, this amp, this fan is rated at a certain maximum amperage, which is that. And putting a fusible link is a good idea, especially if you're stuck in traffic and it gets really hot. So here's a kind of a detailed look of our shroud. You can see where it lines up there. I'm not crazy about these two bolts. They're kind of an eyesore. See what I mean? But look at all the room that we save by having an electric fan. That's really cool. So, so far so good with my first electric fan conversion on the 1983 Volvo 245. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. I'm gonna take a, the night off, gotta do some homework because school comes first, apparently. Not always, but got a paper due tomorrow and I'm about to have some dinner, so catch up with you guys on the morrow. Today's Wednesday, February 18th, and we have a little bit of a fun thing to do today. So, this is a this is from a Saab, and it basically goes in line of the coolant hoses, and that's the temperature switch. And so what happens is when the temperature gets hot enough, it grounds it out, which triggers the fan. Here's our BMW switch. It's got three terminals. One is the neutral ground. The other two are uh, one and two for the low and high. The temperature is stated on the side of it. It is it's a 91 and 99 degrees Celsius low and high, um, but you know you can see that the threads are not nearly close enough to fitting in this piece. So what I did is for less than 20 bucks, I went on Amazon.com, used my two-day shipping Prime, and got me this. It's uh, from a company called Fastway Racer. Uh, it's basically a coolant sensor adapter. It's a 1 8 national pipe thread inside which is too small so what we're going to do is we're going to drill it out to fit this. I, I looked up a drill tap chart on my phone and to get the uh, M14 by 1.5 which is the thread pitch and size of that we need a 12.5 millimeter drill bit or commonly known as a half inch. And then we're going to tap it with our tap and die kit here.